Well, good evening, Abundant Life Tabernacle. It's Brother Ron here, again, to read from Scripture, to do a little bit of teaching. I want to expound a little bit on uh, what I know. If there's something that I read that I don't know, I usually try to make that clear if I'm unsure of something. But uh, tonight I'm going to go ahead and actually read from the book of John. St. John, starting at the first chapter. I'm going to do a little differently than uh, what some of the other brothers have done in the past, and I'm going to just read the full chapter and kind of pick it apart, the, the pieces that I feel uh, could use a little bit of explanation. So, before I begin, let me say a prayer. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to read your word once more. I ask and I pray that you teach me as I read out loud, that you teach others that hear your word tonight. I pray, Lord, that the good seed of your word falls on the good ground of our hearts. Help us, Lord, to have ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay. The Gospel according to John. Chapter 1. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word. Capital W. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Still referring to the Word. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Nothing was made without the Word. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness couldn't comprehend, couldn't overcome the light. Couldn't then, and it can't now. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. The light. It's singular. It's a singular phrase. That all men through him might believe. He, still speaking of John, he was not that light. But he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He, now it's referring to the light, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. The world didn't recognize that light when he was here. He came unto his own, his own nation, his own people, the Jews, and his own received him not. But as many as, as received him, to them gave he, talking about that light. Those of us who've studied scripture enough know who that light is. That light is Jesus Christ. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, that he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. So John himself confessed right there that Jesus existed even before John was ever born. And he said, He that cometh after me is preferred before me. He's preferred above me. And verse 16, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. 
For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. Why is that? Because God is a spirit. The only begotten son. If he's a begotten son, that means he was man. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. Declared, another word for that can be revealed. The begotten son revealed the father. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? And he said, and this is where he started to quote from Old Testament scripture, prophecy, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? So they're wondering of John, who gave you the authority to baptize? If you're not one of these people we named. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. John recognized that he wasn't even worthy to touch the dirtiest part of the Son of God, of Jesus. The filthiest part of a human at the time was of course the feet because they walked around in desert places and they wore sandals a lot so he was admitting that he wasn't even worthy to touch the filthy feet of Jesus now something God revealed to me a while back which I always it meant a lot to me and it I mean it's a, a, a uh, God was revealing his love to me when, when he showed me this. But that passage there, when John admitted that he's not worthy to stoop down and unloose the latchet of Jesus' shoes. Yet Jesus himself was humble enough to wash the feet of his own disciples. In that, he displayed his love for his people. That's the same kind of love that he expects his disciples to us to have for one another. Verse 28. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not. So John didn't, didn't recognize him at first, he admits. But that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. So this was a sign that God had given John ahead of time to reveal to John who the Messiah was was to be. So verse 33, John says, And I knew him not, but but he that sent me to baptize, talking about God, he that sent John to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, after John stood 
and two of his disciples. And looking upon Jesus, as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day. For it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following Jesus, or the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So Philip recognized who Jesus was from the Old Testament scriptures. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Now how... How can that be? How did Jesus see Nathanael? Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. So Nathanael, he was humbled in that moment because he realized that Jesus had the power to perceive and know where Nathanael had just been. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So, there are a couple other passages that I would like to turn to before I conclude here. <clears throat> Just a moment. First Peter, chapter 2. Starting at verse 4. So keep in mind what Jesus said of Peter in John chapter 1. He, he told Peter, Thou shalt be called Cephas, which means a stone. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 4, he says, he writes, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. This is talking about Jesus, the chief cornerstone. And Peter says, Ye, meaning the all saints of God, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God 
by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also, it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. The reason I, I felt to read from that passage is because Peter wasn't the only stone. He was a stone. Jesus being the chief cornerstone, and we are all lively stones through him. We're all part of the building of God. All right, and so I do have another passage before I finish it all up. I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 28. Okay, this is, I'm going to start at verse 12. And the reason I'm going to read this is because in John 1, 51, Jesus said to Nathanael, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That might sound like some familiar wording to you. And there's a reason for that. In Genesis 28, verse 12, Jacob fell asleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. Ladder can also be uh, translated as stairway. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it, on the ladder. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. I'm stopping it there because the point I'm trying to make is I believe Jacob, the vision that he had, the dream that he had was he was seeing the way to the Father. He was seeing Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said in another place, no man comes to the Father but by him. And that is a solid truth that I want to leave you all with tonight. I pray that you meditate on the word that was read out, read before you, and I pray it blessed you. I love you all in Jesus' name. Good night.